Just over a month ago, four members of a Muslim family were killed in London, Ontario. October 2020, a volunteer outside of a Toronto mosque is stabbed and murdered. January 2017, six individuals inside a Quebec mosque are shot and killed by an armed gunman. It's a horrific reality that Muslims have to face every time they go to pray and worship inside a mosque here in Canada, a country that prides itself on its inclusion and diversity. Those attacks and far too many others prompting the first ever National Action Summit on Islamophobia today. You go pray and you worship, you're attacked and killed. You go for a walk with your beloved family and you get uh, killed by a car. You go for, uh, for work and your beard is cut off. These are just some examples, sir, that we have seen the consequences of Islamophobia. Today's first of its kind national summit led by the federal government was held virtually. A welcome step forward for a community still reeling from the alleged hate-motivated murder of the Afsal family in London, Ontario, just over a month ago. The lone survivor, a nine-year-old boy who was on the minds of many today as the meeting began. I imagine him, you know, skipping around his parents as most kids were that night and then waking up in a hospital alone only to find out the tragedy that fell upon him. The Prime Minister telling those in attendance that he is here to listen. We do have to fight for the kind of Canada we all want to see. A place where we celebrate diversity, where we stand together, where we look out for each other. That's the promise our country must work hard to live up to. Because too many times and for too many people, that promise has been broken. Denunciations are important. And it's important politicians to stand with, with, with Muslim community across the nation. But what's more important than that is political action. Earlier this week, the National Council of Canadian Muslims released a list with more than 60 recommendations. It includes establishing a working definition of Islamophobia, a national reporting hotline on Islamophobia and other race-motivated hate crimes, and implementing changes to systemic Islamophobia in policing. The list was shared at today's summit. Though unquestioned, the federal government remains vague on what recommendations they plan to put into action. Is the government committed to putting some of them into action? And that's exactly the conversation that we're having. Um, and that's where I've been having a series of meetings and they'll continue. Many today pointing to government policies in place that they believe are racist by design. The Canadian Revenue Agency is being accused of continuing to audit registered Muslim charities for terrorism funding. When we asked, well, what other charities have been subject to this anti-radicalization regime, there aren't any other charities other than a Muslim one. That's it. We're going into a dangerous route, and this is why uh, we have to remember that if we, if we don't stand to this, what will history remember us? Today, members of the Muslim community saying the success of the event will be measured on whether or not this is a one-off. Is it a political stunt during an election campaign or the beginning of meaningful change and action? Only time will tell. It's a story we'll continue to follow in the months ahead. I'm Adrian Goldberg for City News.